Hello! I don't know about you, but often I hear people saying something that why are we always talking about politics in our church? Why can we not just stick to faith and the Bible? Well, obviously, those people tend to forget um, one text from the letters uh, from Paul, uh, the one called the letter to Philemon. And uh, this letter is a little different than others. Uh, when we speak of the letters that Paul wrote, often it's um, amalgamation of many letters into one or two. They try to solve many problems. Here in this text that is fairly short it is one letter, one chapter, one topic, one issue. Uh, so it's very, um, I would say, unique in the New Testament and also in Paul's letter. Basically, it's the story of Onesimus, who had fled his master, Philemon, and seek refuge and protection from Paul. So Paul uh, writes this letter asking Philemon to take him back. And... <laughs> At first sight, is surprising for some of us, especially uh, those of us who believe in social justice and from this current in the Christianity, because there's no demand to free Onesimus, because from what we understand, Onesimus is a Christian. He's converted. And you would assume that Paul would say, well, since Onesimus is a Christian now, he should be free, he should not be your slave. But no, he's returning him with this letter and what it would be in what would be the same state of servitude. So we read this and we say, well, wait a minute, where's, where's the good news in this? Where is this love of God for, uh, for the people? Where is Jesus' message to invite us of crossing to abolish all those boundaries, all those limitations? And, and to the point, this text is challenging that some in the past have used it to justify the institution of slavery. So, so we wish that Paul had made one of those statements that only him could do, you know, saying, you stupid Philemon, don't, don't have slaves. Um, it did not happen. But what did happen, what we can find, is something that we overlook often in this text. Paul asked Philemon to welcome back Onesimus as a beloved brother. And that's surprisingly, that's surprising because in the Greco-Roman world, slaves were not human beings. They were like this pen, except that it talked. It has the same right, it has the same, uh, same view on it. And Paul asked his friend to welcome Anesimus and asked to see God's work in this human being, to see God's presence in this slave, and which is revolutionary, which is breaking social norm. And 2,000 years later, if slavery is almost abolished around the world, servitude, exploitation is still a reality. We have corporation and multinational industry who, sees, who see their worker as disposable good. We have government that consider the poor as an expense, as a charge for society. How many times have we seen people putting that put profits before human rights? And personally, as a North American, I'm aware that our people who are suffering 
so I can enjoy my way of life, my comfort, and, and everything that I take for granted. So the challenge for all of us through this text is, are we ready to see those people who are exploited? Are we ready to see the presence of God in them? And to consider them as brothers or sisters? Or simply keeping them in a state of being unknown, voiceless, faceless? Do we conveniently look the other way when it's convenient? This is why we can say that the Bible is a challenge. The words of the Bible is a challenge for our social structure, for our economy, for our politics. This is why we cannot just stay above all of this and pretend that we live in a bubble. Those words speak to us, challenge us, and ask us to reflect on our brothers and sisters who are maybe in a less fortunate situation. Are we ready to protect them? Are we ready to see them as equal and are called to be God's people, to be God's church? Once again, thank you ag again for watching. And until next time, I remain Stéphane Vermette, the lectionary man. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.